everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and we continue our review series of the Madness of the Dark Moon Fair. Today we're taking a look at the Shaman cards in both Standard and Wild, rating, it, rating them on a 5 star basis, 5 star being absolute meta breaking insane, good cards in like almost every deck, 1 star just being basically unplayable, you're never putting it in your ladder deck. Uh, right now in Standard, Shaman is basically non-existent. You have like um, a control shaman list out there that like heals and removes but doesn't have a win condition for the most part and that's about it quest quest shamans popped up a little bit but there's really not much going on and in wild you have basically even shaman big shaman and sometimes you run into like uh, a shutterwalk shaman like a shutterwalk control shaman whether it be reno or whatever um and sometimes you run into like quest jade shaman so there are a little bit more uh, varieties out there. So let's see what these cards will do to impact both Standard and Wild. So first we have Revolve. It's a one mana spell. Transform all minions into random ones with the same cost. So this is all minions. This is friendly. This is enemy. All that stuff. So this is like a quasi devolve type of effect. You're going to want to put this in your deck if you want to like just transform your opponent's buff stuff. And you know maybe you have a wide board of like four drops or something and even Desert Hair, you can Desert Hair Revolve and get three different three drops, which can be alright. This card seems kind of like middling, not great. It's like a worse Evolve, it's a worse Evolve, it's a worse of everything. And that doesn't necessarily make it a bad card, but I just don't see this really fitting into anything. Other than it's like a really kind of garbage silence, I guess, for like a Librem Paladin type of deck. I think it's like a tech option, like Plague of Murlocs type of deal, and it's a bit cheaper. I'm going to give it a 2, but overall I don't think you're using this aggressively. I think you're using this more to screw with your opponent than anything. And in Wild, maybe throw this into Odd Shaman to like get through taunts, but that deck is more of a burn deck. It doesn't care as much about mini damage, but it can. I just still don't think you run it because you're hurting your own board a lot more then you're probably hurting your enemies a lot of the time. It's just a dead card. And I don't think you're putting this into, like, uh, Shutterwalk Shaman or anything like that. But uh, I'll give it a 2 for Wild. Again, it's not particularly awful. It just doesn't really fit in anywhere, and I don't think the power level is good enough uh, to make it uh, something other than a niche card. Next, we have the Cage Match Custodian. It's a 2-minute two 2-2 two -two elemental and has the battle cry of Draw a Weapon. Uh, this card's insanely good. 2-minute two 2-2 two -two Tutor Weapon. That's really powerful. Uh, whether you're putting this into like an aggro shaman where you're getting Doomhammer, Evolve Shaman, getting that Evolve weapon, it's just a really powerful effect. There is a weapon in this set, but I don't think it's worth cheating out or getting. But I mean, it's this is going to see play in any shaman deck that want, wants to run a weapon, and there's multiple archetypes that could definitely do that. I'm going to give this a three because I don't know how strong those decks are going to be out of the gate. I'm not totally sold that aggro shaman's coming back in full force, but it might. So I'll give it a 3 in Standard. In Wild, this is like auto-include in Even Shaman. Like, why? it's just ridiculously good there. Because you have Splitting Axe. Uh, maybe you justify running Jade Claws again. Uh, just to get that weapon. That was never that bad. But, you mean, it's it's perfect. It's a 2-drop to play, draw a card. That deck lacks card draw. Um, and it can do some really good stuff. I'm going to give it a 4 for Wild. Because you could also throw this into other decks. Where there'd be, like, the Jade Shaman deck I mentioned earlier. You'd love that there. Because you can get... Jade Claws and all that stuff. It's just a really, really solid card. I think even better in Wild than it is in Standard right now. Next we have Pitmaster. It's a 3-mana 1-2 Battlecry. Summon a 3-2 Duelist. Corrupt Summon 2. So at the very worst, it's 3-mana 4-4. Four, four. That's not bad. And if you double up on it, you summon 2 Duelists. And then you got an extra 3-2 on top of that. Again, you have to Corrupt to make this work. So it's, it's slow. Um, and the effect is not exactly great. 3-2s are pretty vulnerable after turns 4 and 5. I um, could see it like a quest shaman type of deck. You got some synergy there. Maybe do like a quest uh, Yasharaj uh, shaman deck because you can get this back as a zero mana corrupt card. That could be decent, but pretty unimpactful. Not really sold on this. It's a decent little stat bomb, but I think there's just better stuff to do in standard potentially. Shaman just still looks kind of rough, honestly. I'm going to give it a two and a wild. I don't see why you're ever playing this in any deck ever there. I'm going to give it a 1 in Wild. I don't know where this fits in into, like, literally any archetype. Just doesn't really work. Next, we have Storm Strike, 3 mana spell. Uh, this deals 3 damage to a minion, and then you give your hero plus 3 attack. So you can remove something and go face, or remove two different things. Um, This card's incredibly powerful. This is 3 mana deal 6, effectively, and you, it's versatile. You can split it. You can kill two different things, or, you know, just go face, or whatever. This card is really, really strong in, like, 
pretty much any deck. You can play this in an aggressive deck. You can play this in a controlling deck. You can just throw this into just whatever. No overload or anything. Just a really, really powerful card. I'm going to give this a 4 in standard. In wild, you can throw this into Odd Shaman. Um, you could throw this into like some kind of burn shaman. Um, hell, you could probably run it as a removal, maybe even in like a big shaman deck where, you know, you run portal just to clear stuff. Um, it's just a solid, all around, really good card, whether it's standard wall. I'm going to give it four there as well. It definitely will pop up in certain decks. Just this flexible removal that can also go face in a lot of different ways. It's just really good, really strong card. Next up, we have Whack a Knoll Hammer. It's a three mana, three, two weapon. When, after your hero attacks, give a random friendly minion plus one, plus one. So that's on board. You have to have a minion on board. And, you know, you can potentially give yourself Wind Fury with the Legendary we'll talk about in a bit. Giving yourself a little bit more buffs on board. But overall, these type of cards have never historically seen any play. It just seems really weak. Like, yeah, it's War Axe for three. But all you're getting is two buffs out of it. And it just doesn't seem impactful whatsoever. Not sold on this card in any deck at all in Standard. I'm going to give it a one. I just think it's... Really awful. Take it in Arena. That's about it. Wild, even worse. Like, you're never playing this card. It, it's a one. Just kind of a waste of a card. <laughs> Speaking of the Wind Fury thing, we have Inara Storm Crash. 5 mana, 4, 5 Legendary. On your turn, your hero has plus 2 attack in Wind Fury. So, you just play this. That's 4 damage with your face, right? 2 attack Wind Fury. If you have a weapon up, then you're doing a lot of damage. You have that a 3 mana weapon, a 4 mana weapon. You have the Evolve weapon, right? You're dealing... 8, uh, 6, 12 damage right away. That's that's incredible. And it's a constant effect. If this card survives, the next turn you will also have that. So it's an auto-kill legendary minion. And yeah, this is just incredibly powerful. Um, it can pop up in multiple archetypes, whether it's just pure aggression, going face with like the rock biters type of stuff, or, you know, just using it as type of a controlly type of way of hitting the board and all that. I'm giving this a 4. It's really solid. Um, I don't think it's a meta-defining, meta-warping card, but it's just a really, really strong legendary. In a wild, I don't know where this goes into. This doesn't go into any archetype that's out there, other than maybe you're trying to make Overload Shaman work with, like, Tunnel Trog and Doomhammer and Rockbiter, and then you're throwing an R into there. Because this doesn't really make sense in Odd Shaman, which is, like, spell damage-based. doesn't make sense in, like, Shutterwalk or Jade or anything like that. I'm going to give it a 3, though. It's just such a good card that maybe it just elevates something to work. But I just, yeah, I don't see it really slotting in realistically and well, but I'll give it an optimistic 3. Next we have Magic Thin, a 3 mana 3 4 Murloc. After a friendly Murloc dies, add a random legendary minion to your hand. So right now Murloc Shaman is just not a thing in standard whatsoever. You have one of the most freaking broken minions ever. You have a 2 mana minion that infinitely discovers or generates other Murlocs as long as you play them. And there's just not enough. And this is the only real Murloc support we're seeing pretty much this whole expansion so i don't see murloc shaman making a comeback and random legendaries on average suck and you have to have murlocs die to get value it's just not a good card i'm giving it a one it's a really cute meme it looked the card art sick but it's just not good in wild murloc shaman is okay it's not like a top tier deck it's decent and this is a three minute three four you can throw in there um, and get a little bit of value. Is that worth it? Probably not, but there's more potential in Wild just because, yeah, the Murlocs are a hell of a lot better in, in the Wild format, especially with, like, the, uh, seven mana spell you can use to buff your Murlocs. So I'll give it a two in Wild. I don't think it makes the cut, but there'd be more of a realistic chance of it doing that in that format. Now we have Deathmatch Pavilion. This is a two mana spell. Summon a three, two duelist. If your hero attack this turn, summon another. So, you need to have a weapon up, you need to have Rockbiter up, or you have to have Legendary going, and then, you know, you get a 2 mana 6-4. That's that's okay. Uh, it's hard to curve into this. It's almost impossible. You'd have to coin into the 2 mana, like, weapon from the prior expansion, and then play this, and that's not good, because then you're running a pretty bad weapon, and then you can't do Stormforged Axe, because it overloads, and so this is kind of a bit slower, and you kind of want to take advantage of the fact you're getting a 6-4 early, because later in the game it's not as great. This feels just very underwhelming. It's a 2 mana 3 2 early. It's a 2 mana 6 4 later. But again, those bodies are so vulnerable after turns 3, 4, and 5 that it's really not worth it. I don't see this much seeing any play at all in standard. I'm going to give it a 1. And in wild, again, I don't see what you're doing with this. You're not putting this into even shaman. You're not putting this into an aggro deck. You're not building a new archetype around this attack shaman thing i don't think so i'm giving you one both formats i don't really see this being much more than a bloodfin raptor to be honest with you next we have the first ever legendary totem 
Um, my boy Shamanistical would be proud. It's called Gran Totem Izor. It's a three mana zero four totem. At the end of your turn, give plus one plus one to all other totems in your hand, deck, and battlefield. So that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of hand buffing. That's a lot of deck buffing. That's a lot of board buffing. Um, totem Shaman has always been, for a while now, has been decent. It's like on the brink in standard. It's never quite good enough. But a card like Grand Totem Izor, is that enough? Like you play this, you totemic... Um, might it makes it hard to stick around then you splitting axe and then you get out of control if you can copy this and have it live for like a turn it can get out of control we had totem goliath buffed recently this gets buffed by that um you have evil totem you have synergies in there and this might be the card to really push it over the top because this effect is really strong um a zero four isn't the easiest thing in the room especially with the zero mana buffs you have lightning bloom turns you can do like you can grand totem coin lightning bloom reflection and that would be insane they buff each other in your deck in your hand uh, there's possibilities with this i'm gonna give it a three i think totem shaman has a shot not a great one but it has a shot in standard and in wild you'd think this would go into odd shaman because you know you're buffing totems but odd shaman doesn't really care about totems it's more about spell damage burn damage overloading um, I don't think it fits in there. I don't think it really fits into an archetype in Wild, so I'm going to give it a 2. But, I don't know, maybe it works in Odd Shaman. I just don't see it. So, yeah, I'll give it a 2 in Wild, but definitely has a good shot in Standard. And lastly, we have a Corrupt Spell, Dunk Tank. It's 4 mana, deal 4 damage, so it's Mortal Strike, which is pretty bad. But if you Corrupt this, then it deal, deals 2 damage to all enemy minions. So, so it's pretty reminiscent of Starfall for Druid, when it's got the quest act to be of both things going, except it can go face. Um, this card, I think, is being slept on a little bit. If you're playing that quest Yasharaj Shaman, I kind of think might be able to work. Um, getting this back can be very powerful for zero mana. It's burn plus removal, and you can do some pretty good stuff, especially with the quest like tour guide Yasharaj. That could be really powerful. Um, and I mean, yeah, at, at, at its non-corrupt stage, it's really awful. That's the big problem is that it's bad. But you have so many expensive AoEs, like how to get the scheme, all these other spells that this will get corrupt relatively easily and you can play it on like a little bit later and have a good AoE. I don't know. It, it It's probably fringe and I'm going to give it a two for that reason, but I don't think it's the absolute hot garbage I've seen some people saying it is. And in terms of wild, it's hot garbage. <laughs> you're not playing this in wild. It's really slow. You have better options. Like, you're just going to play Volcano, things like that. So I'm going to give it a 1. But yeah, overall, Shaman the set still looking pretty rough. I don't know. They need that classic rework more than ever. We'll see. Maybe Shaman comes back in standard. The aggro stuff's enough. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to tune in later for the next review. Have a great day. Stay salty, my friends.